Brisbane is undergoing an economic boom with the population surging. And what does more people mean? traffic problems. Whether you're at a standstill on Latwich Road, leaning on your horn on Coronation Drive, or trying to find the fastest moving lane on the Riverside Expressway. And while Brisbane doesn't have the same population numbers that cause the traffic delays seen in Sydney or Melbourne, these are still significant issues for the people living and working here in Brisbane. So what is the Brisbane City Council doing about it? What is the Brisbane Metro? And is it going to fix our congestion issues? Let's investigate it further because today we're talking tactics. Welcome to Talking Tactics, where we give you the news, information and tactics that you need to thrive in the business world. Before we get started, why not leave a like on this video and be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on the next episode. I'm in Brisbane CBD and I'm sure most people familiar with the city will know that getting in here in the mornings every day isn't an easy experience. A lot of Brisbane's main roads become congested early, buses fill up quickly, the train network doesn't cover the entire city, and the city cats can take a long time due to the winding nature of the Brisbane River. And while the cycleway network is expanding, cycling isn't a viable option for the bulk of the population's transportation needs. The Brisbane Metro is one of Brisbane's new transport infrastructure projects, one that is hopefully going to ease some of the city's congestion issues. The Brisbane Metro is an all-electric, high-capacity, turn-up-and-go public transport system that will link the Brisbane CBD to the suburbs. The route is 21 kilometres, connecting 18 stations, and will run along two dedicated busways. The first from Eight Mile Plains to Roma Street, and the second from the University of Queensland at St Lucia to the Royal Brisbane Hospital in Hurston. The vehicles servicing these routes will be a fleet of electric buses capable of carrying up to 170 passengers that will share the busway with existing bus services and is scheduled to be completed by 2024. Sounds like a great way to reduce congestion across the city and to find out a bit more, I'm going to head into the new Brisbane Metro Information Centre here on Adelaide Street where I'm going to chat with a very special guest. Councillor Murphy, how are you? How are you going? Good to see you, mate. <laughs> Councillor Ryan Murphy is the local member for Chandler Ward in Brisbane's East and is the Civic Cabinet Chair for Transport, which means he and his committee are in charge of developing a plan for transport services across the city and ensuring the effective operations of those services. So in Brisbane, we have this great busway network. It was built throughout the 2000s and it runs primarily from north to south in the city. The problem is this busway network uh, works too well. It's now got way too many buses using it every day. And congestion right here in the city's core means that people will have a very fast trip on the busway up until they get to this section, where oftentimes they'll be sitting in traffic on Victoria Bridge or in the Adelaide Street busway tunnel. What Brisbane Metro is all about is about decongesting this core and providing a high capacity, high frequency turn up and go service. Turn up and go services means that you won't need a timetable and when you arrive at one of these busway stations, you can expect the next service to arrive within three minutes during peak hour times. This is really looking to alleviate a lot of the pressures on the system, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. that's right. But we've also got to get all of these buses that are currently crowding up the city streets and underneath the city, we've got to get them out of the CBD and back out into the suburbs. And so we do that with the Metro vehicle which is the centrepiece of the project. So let me show you that. The Metro vehicle is where some people might get a little confused as to what it actually is. Is it a bus? Is it a light rail or a tram? Is it an underground subway station similar to a London Tube network or New York subway? Well, it's similar to all of those things, but it's also a little different. Well, this is the Metro uh, vehicle. It is uh, the Tesla of public transport, a vehicle that has very high capacity, so 170 passengers, so more than the vast majority of the trams in Melbourne. It has zero tailpipe emissions, so it's an electric vehicle. It flash charges in just six minutes, so as it stops along the route, a pantograph will come up from the vehicle, will uh, dock into this flash charger, and the battery will take a full charge in just six minutes. That's incredibly which is, quick. It's how we keep the batteries light, and it's how we uh, make sure that it can just keep moving, keep going on the busway. The, the biggest thing that affects its endurance is actually the driver. We need to give him a meal break. <laughs> These vehicles are approximately 24 metres long and almost three and a half metres high. With the ability to carry 150 passengers in comfort mode and 170 passengers in event mode. They have two electric motors delivering 380 kilowatts or 510 horsepower and 5,000 newton metres of torque. 
They include multiple mobility aid bays and have a low floor design for a high level of accessibility. Plus, onboard telemetrics to provide real-time travel information for passengers. The vehicles will have a top speed of 90 kilometers per hour and the first pilot vehicle, essentially a test vehicle, has already arrived in Brisbane and is being tested on the roads and busways right now. So what you've got is a, a system that is clean, green and renewable and here for a very long period of time. Exactly. It's essentially a trackless tram, so it's the, it's the best of light rail, but without all the heavy infrastructure like the poles and wires. So it allows us to deliver a light rail-like experience, but at a fraction of the cost. So why do we need an upgraded bus system? Well, Brisbane is a rising city with a growing population and a demand for faster, more efficient public transport is growing with it. Plus, with high profile events like the upcoming 2032 Olympic Games, the city really needs to step up and deliver world class infrastructure. So Brisbane's bus network is decades old. It needs a really uh, good shake up uh, and it importantly needs to move to a trunk and feeder system where we actually um, don't have everybody crowding in a bus in the outer suburbs and going into the city but we actually um, get people to change service and get on a metro when they get to the busway station. That enables us to have real step change in capacity growth in the system and it allows us to have a lot more reliable uh, journeys for passengers. Brisbane's transportation infrastructure is currently in upgrade mode. In addition to the metro project and major road upgrades, there are a number of new green bridges which will span the river, increasing the walkability of the CBD. And there is also the Cross River Rail project, a massive undertaking creating new rail tunnels under the river and adding new or upgrading underground CBD railway stations. The Cross River Rail and Brisbane Metro will have key connections at Roma Street, Boggo Road Station, and just recently announced at Woolongabba Station. As part of the city deal that was announced a few months ago uh, by the Lord Mayor, the Premier and uh, the Prime Minister, there will be integration between Cross River Rail and Brisbane Metro. And the announcement that was made uh, just a few months ago was about bringing together the Woolongatta Cross River Rail Station and a Metro station. So that means people will be able to transfer between Metro services and Cross River Rail train services at the Woolongabba station. It's a $450 million station, an investment from all three levels of government. It means it's gonna be even easier for people to get around Brisbane. With the Gabba Stadium set to host the opening and closing ceremonies for the 2032 Brisbane Olympic Games and the athletics events, the Woolongabba combined rail and metro station looks like it will turn into one of the busiest transport hubs in the state. But Woolongabba isn't the only location that's going to be upgraded as part of the metro project. The new tunnel under Adelaide Street reducing bus traffic will enable the street to be transformed into a walkable, tree-lined boulevard, improving the area for pedestrians, businesses and retailers on one of Brisbane's oldest streets. The Victoria Bridge, which which has already been converted into a green bridge for bus, cycle and pedestrian traffic only, will have added shade over the top and a pocket park at the northern end with a new viewing deck. The Cultural Centre bus station will be made longer and wider and will have a seamless transition from the cultural precinct onto the busway platform. There will be significant public realm improvements at Grey Street and Melbourne Street. Some suburban stations will get upgrades including end of route vehicle charging facilities. Plus, there is the depot being built at Rochdale which will house the fleet of 60 metro vehicles and provide end of route flash charging and operations requirements. These upgrades should help to future proof the project and allow it to be expanded upon going forward. That's one of the great benefits of Brisbane Metro is because we're not putting in poles and wires, digging up uh, the earth and spending years in construction, the solution is actually quite modular. I mean, all a metro needs to operate is essentially a bus lane and we can paint bus lanes anywhere. So uh, we actually are looking at uh, expanding out to Carindale or the airport in the future, but obviously that's subject to funding availability and discussions with the federal and state government. Brisbane is pursuing clean energy solutions when it comes to infrastructure and city building projects, which is what the people want, especially after the outcome of the recent federal election, which saw climate action as a key issue. Brisbane City Council is definitely ahead of the game in this regard. Brisbane wants to be a leader in clean, green technology, and Metro is really driving that. The reality is that we can't go on uh, just continually building roads forever. We need to get people out of their cars and onto public transport. So to give them a really high quality experience, that's why we've got the Metro vehicles and I think it's going to be extremely popular when it enters service in 2024. I think so too. Brisbane still has a bit of a way to go before all of its transport issues are solved, but with infrastructure projects like the Metro, the city feels like it's on its way. But my question for you is this, do you think the Brisbane Metro is going to ease congestion in the city? What transport options do you think Brisbane or even South East Queensland needs? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments section down below. I'm Mel Picos and we've been talking tactics.
So Melody got on board yet? Yeah, I'm on. Uh, I'm, I'm at Griffith University at the moment. Ah, excellent. I'm um, ready to get on my Brisbane Metro. I'm holding one of the handrails. Well, good on you. <laughs> it's very spacious and pretty cool. Bring your kids down and have a look.